All right, all right, all right. What's up, everybody? We've got ourselves a lovely, easy three base push build that we're going to be doing today. And we're going to be teaching okay, you how to do, once again, a one size fits all build order. Now, obviously, if you guys are above, ah, say, plat two, uh, you definitely should be making adjustments for each matchup and, you know, changing all sorts of things. But you guys can figure that out on your own, you guys, girls, ladies, gents, zealots, zergings, marines. And whether you're a cheeser, a macro player, a multitask god, I think there's something you can always get from a build like this because essentially we are going to be opening the tech tree up a lot quicker than I have with the two and three racks builds. So a lot of people have been watching, you know, bronze to GM, other guides I've been doing, and I'm a big fan of multiple barracks openings. And while this is still going to be a marine focused build order, we're going to be opening up with the 111. The difference with the 111 is, of course, very straightforward. Very, very straightforward. So that is simply that we are getting a quick factory and starport. One barracks, one factory, one starport. That's going to give us more tech. It means you guys can get more comfortable using siege tanks early on to defend things, getting used to handling a cyclone at the beginning of the game, which is a very technical but fun unit to use. And uh, we're still going to be going into a big push of marine tank, but it's going to be off three bases rather than two bases. So even though we have a pre-planned attack, it's going to be a 2-2 two -two marine tank push. We want to try and hit it about 9.30? Uh, I say that with a bit of a question mark because I'm not exactly sure how it'll air out when we get into some real games. Um, we're going to go very standard expand guild build 19. We're going to go for the Reaper there. Now I'm playing against AI in this game. We're going to play against a, few, a diamond player of each race after this game to show you what this will look like in uh, a more realistic scenario. But for this one, we're just going to show you the very bare bones of the build. So real standard Reaper expand so far. We're going to pull this SCV over, build another depot there. And uh, obviously, I'll just send this SCV scout home now. That'll be fine. We've seen that our opponent has expanded. And you want to go Reaper. Send that across to scout and harass. And then we're going to go for Marine, Factory, and then Reactor. Now, if you guys don't like Reapers at all, you could totally go Reactor first, or Marine, then Factory, then Reactor. You can make adjustments, and there's a whole bunch of info in the notes. If you guys are watching this on YouTube, check it out down below. Uh, link up to the document, and we'll be showing you guys that document in between the games as well. And kind of just talking about some of the details. So you can skip the Reaper if you don't like going Reapers. For now, guys, first time learning the build, don't tunnel vision on the Reaper, all right? Let's just leave him outside the opponent's base and forget it exists. Why? Because when you're learning a build, I mean, micro interactions like, hey, what do I do with a Reaper? That changes game to game, and it's just not that important. Macro is important. It's learning and memorizing what comes next in the build. So we went factory, we went second gas. As soon as the factory is done, we want to get a tech lab and a star board up. Might have to wait a few seconds to get enough gas with both of those. Once you're main saturated, we rally to the natural. We're now just building marines. We're going to build a cyclone and then tank production after that and then liberators, okay? Now, we're going to try and do this all off two gas, okay? So there will be some little gaps in the tech unit production, but that's okay. It means we are getting a bit more minerals and that minerals is going to allow us to take a third command center and then we're going to explode up into the barracks and the bio production. Now, walling off, don't really need to do that versus Terran. More important versus Zerg and Protoss, because they have Zealots and Zerglings and melee units that can breach your wall. Other than that, though, we are looking pretty good. Now, you can skip the Cyclone if you're playing uh, a Zerg player as well. Let's get that Liberator started, and we're going to just rally that over here. And when I'm ready, I can grab it from that rally point and send it in. Now, if you want, you can have this blocking for Oracles, for air units coming in. There's a few different ways you can do it. Building some more depots. You can see I can't quite afford a tank straight away. So like I said, there's little bits of downtime on your production. If you guys want to change this build, do a, it's going to change things quite a bit, slow down your economy, but you could add a quick third gas. It'll allow you to keep up tank production nonstop. It just means you can have a bit less minerals, which is going to slow down little things like this. Third command center going to go down here. Going to build that way out to the edge, just so it doesn't block any barracks placement. Keep building. Another hand. depot there, and we the Liberator. Leave. Okay, cool. So, <clears throat> this is where I actually like to go. We're going to go for a second tank straight away, all right? Siege that one on the high ground, because why not? Keep building a CVs, mules, all that sort of stuff. Now, if you're not that fast, and you see you regularly float money, 
The next thing is you might want to go drop all four barracks at once and two engineering bays and two gases. But if you're doing it really tight, a better way to do it is you build these two barracks here because they're going to take these two add-ons, the reactor and the tech lab. Then you go two gases, two engineering bays. Keep killing up units in between all of this. Doop -de -doop -de -doop -de -doop -de -doop. And then you're going to get your fourth and fifth barracks. So you kind of do it in these little stages, right? These little set pieces. Now this tech lab and reactor gets rebuilt by these. So we take a break from our tech unit production. And those ones aren't going to get swapped anymore. Those will be the actual tech lab and reactor that they sit on for the rest of the game. You can put guys on gas. So like I said, I did that in kind of set little pieces because I'm very fast. If you guys are not as fast, just build four barracks all in one action and two engineering bays and queue the workers all back to mining. You know, don't overcomplicate things. Uh, always try to keep things simpler. Now, I, I forgot to queue the Liberator in because we're talking about the build. That's fine. We're just going to queue that in and not even look at it. That could do game ending damage or it could do absolutely nothing. The point is, remember what I talked about, guys? You want to try and focus on doing damage um, and microing every unit to its maximum after you, you've got the base of the build order down, okay? Not before. So it's more important for you to get the macro down, know exactly what comes next in each situation before you start going, oh, I'm gonna fucking micro, nye, 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 get, you get one more probe. And you're floating 2000 minerals and it's like, wait, hey, hold on a second. It's kind of more important to focus on our build here, buddy. <laughs> All right, so um, I'm gonna just move everything out to the front, by the way. Now, <clears throat> at this point, we do have a choice to be made. So we've got Gary and Bruce building depots, by the way. And that is, what do we add for our three base production? Right now we have five barracks, a factory, a starport. Well, obviously after the fourth and fifth barracks, we need to build the armory so we can start 2-2. Two, two. But this is where you make a choice. And this is personal preference based. You might vary it based on matchup. And that is, what is our three base production? There is an option here to go second factory and a fifth gas. Or the more standard option, and that one's probably best for TVT, I would imagine, where a double tank is awesome. Well, actually, it's up to uh, any one works in any matchup. We're, oh, we're going to do the standard one this time. Three more barracks. No add ons. And even within the three barracks choice, there is actually uh, a different adjustment based on how you want to play. Let's get combat shields. You can build tech labs and add marauders, really good tanky frontline. Or you can just not build any add ons and just immediately strengthen your push in the here and now, in that moment, right? Now, we don't need any more SCBs, guys, because we're already fully saturated just need to keep building these start 2-2 two, two. now at this point you got to think to yourself hey wait a second 2-2's two, just started okay so when we can already see i'm gonna i'm gonna hit two minutes from now just before 10 minutes okay so like i said 9 30 maybe 10 minutes is probably when we're gonna hit and we want to have at least seven tanks at that moment so we've got six tank building we need to make sure the next tank after that starts immediately. So we're doing the very committed, just a handful of Marines right here, right now. A lot of people say, isn't it better to just build more add-ons? Four or five minutes from now, yes. But right now, if you just want an extra six Marines, an extra nine Marines, just building those immediately is going to have more impact in the immediate moment. So that's the trade-off choice you guys are making. If you're committing to this, it's three base all in, no follow-up. Notice I'm saving energy for scans so I can see it on my push. Then that's great. Now, another more advanced thing we can do here, guys, is we can send a drop. We're going to send that into the main, and that's going to make it easy to move across the map. Because tanks suck at moving across the map. If you get intercepted, and then you go to siege, and then unsiege, and then siege, it's really annoying. It's so annoying. It's actually super frustrating. So, um, if you send a drop, it can actually get in there, distract them as you move out. So, the idea here is you're like, okay, cool, yes. That drop's hitting him. Let's push this right side. And we can scan and kind of pick our push shot angle. And we can... Whoa. <clears throat> and you can see... Whoa! Oh my god! I did not realize he was right outside my base! He was meant to be distracted by this! Thankfully, it is a very hard AI, so they don't use their army very well, even though they build a big one. Um, the idea, of course, being that you can pull them away, get your tanks sieged up on your opponent's side of the map, where they're much more effective. Now, I, I often talk about this like it's, uh, I call it a distraction squad sometimes. My medevac count really sucks, by the way. Sometimes I'll send two full drops around, right? And I could drop on the right side of the map and then push the left side. The idea is just give them enough of a problem they really need to be concerned about it 
middle and that's going to be huge. And we can see here, the idea is you want your push to be kind of getting sieged up in their territory right here as 2 2s finishing. If you want vehicle weapons as well, you can go for it. Just remember, you can't really replenish your tanks. So if you ever lose all those, that's that's basically it. This is kind of like a, a one and done sort of situation here. This is not something you're going to have a lot of uh, room on. Now, because his army's so small, I don't want to stim my guys so much just because I don't have many medevacs. If he had a scarier army jumping on me, I would have stimmed my whole army. And we're going to just, once again, move in, siege up. I can see those High Templar don't have enough energy, so even if Storm was upgraded, I could tell just from the bar size that there wasn't enough energy for Storm. So this should be GG at this point. <laughs> These random little sets of cannons is amazing. The scary thing about doing a build like this is you are letting the game go longer, so if your opponent's doing some weird fancy bullshit and you're not good at scouting, this is going to be harder to get success with than my two base builds because there's more of a chance because this push hits later for your opponent to go, whoa, I've got battle cruisers in your mineral line. And you go, oh shit. So you're going to need to learn how to react to things and scout a little bit more and have a bit more awareness. Something I might want to build into this, um, which I didn't mention or remember this game, we were just talking about the macro, is potentially we could have a, a set scan time in each game. And it's up to you guys whether or not you want to do this, but I think an easy way to do it would be here, four minutes. You see that that mule there that just dropped? If we always scan our opponent's base at four minutes, I think that's going to kind of clue us in on some of the dirty things they're doing. Obviously, depending on your skill level, how good people are, it's a really good idea to probably always scan at a certain timing. So let's add that in. Um, we've got a whole bunch of notes here. Here's the, the build order, guys. I didn't write out every single detail, just the, the main points, and I've got these notes on adjustments you can do, the three different productions that I talked about, whether you go the second factory, uh, plus fifth gas, um, three more barracks with tech labs, or no add-ons on those three barracks with just a trickle of marines for the immediate impact, which is what we did in that game. But uh, yeah, this is the push. Um, in terms of like scouting, right? That is kind of huge. So let me just write that down here. <laughs> scouting, all right, so. Actually, the reason why, you know why we don't need to scan at four minutes is because the Liberator goes in at about four minutes 30, I believe, normally, guys, for it, depending on how well we do our build. So Reaper Scout, we have we have SCV Scout, right, on 16. So we have a lot of scouting. SCV Scout, Reaper Scout, Liberator Scout, about four minutes 30 is huge. But if you, if you really wanted to, you could do optional extra scan, optional scan their base at like, I don't know, six minutes 30 or something like that, right? Maybe, and obviously you can figure this out based on, okay, often people hit me with a three base mass charge lot timing and I'm just not ready for it. I feel like this build should automatically be ready for it. <laughs> but maybe that just tells you to keep your tanks on the high ground and to wall off the front or something that you should probably be walling off first prototype. But I'm sure that there's always a scenario you're not prepared for, right? Like I didn't have uh, engineering bay up super fast. And I didn't have any turrets, right? But I figure the Liberator could definitely be used more as a scout, right? So something I could do, I could actually fly the Liberator right through the main base before sieging anything up, right? To see, is there a DT shrine? That, that could be a, an adjustment that you make there as well, right? So you, you can fly this Liberator right through the main base before sieging. So you're actually prioritizing it as a scout rather than a damage dealer. And that's a totally legitimate decision. A lot of people be like, no, that's bad. And it's like, sure. It's up to you, the decisions you make in StarCraft. You're never gonna be 100% scouting everything. You're never gonna be 100% safe in every scenario. But depending on the situations that happen, you wanna kind of reverse engineer some solutions. And I think with this, we've got all the necessary scouting moments that we could possibly have, right? where it's like, hey, we've got so many different different ways we can scout. We didn't focus on it in that first game because we were showing you guys the very bare bones, the basics of it. But uh, as you get more comfortable, you know the build like clockwork, you've done it five, six, seven, eight, 10, 12 times, however many times it takes you to get that, that order down. And then you can focus more on the scouting and thinking about, okay, yep, my opponent's taken a natural. Yep, they've taken a third. 
they've got Forge, Templar Archives, Robo. Okay, yep, they're just teching up, right? They're just, it's standard game, continue as always. And you'll learn, okay, in this particular scenario, when I see this one thing, I need to drop missile turrets for DTs or I need to leave some Marines in the main mineral line to cover against an Oracle. That's, that's not a good example because our Cyclone was covering the main base that whole game, but still. All right, guys, so we're going to go into our first game. We're going to be starting against a Diamond go. Terran player. Let's Diamond 3 is a uh, Chewy backer, almost Diamond 2, though, so on the, on the upper end of Diamond uh, 3 there. About 3,400 MMR, I believe he was. Uh, so let's just go through the build, and I, I did not talk too much at the start. Remember, guys, always rally. First SCV to the ramp, build a depot, okay? And then we are going to go straight to build the barracks there. I'm setting up my camera locations while we're here at the start. Second base, third base, fourth base. And then a fifth base down the bottom. Thanks oh, for the Bezos box. Even. Thank you for the Bezos box, Turandon. So as soon as this finishes, notice we've already queued him there. We go barracks, add that to our control group, and then we go straight for our gas. And we are going to send that 16th SCV across the map. So that's the next one that pops out. So right after I build the, the barracks, I build the gas, and then I rally the SCV across the map. And then I rally to the gas. Now I put this guy on a control group so I can just see what's up now because i'm building a reaper we don't need to leave that scv over there guys a lot of people are like oh don't you need to scout nope we just need to see if he's uh he's doing a proxy or not right and then the reaper that we're building can uh potentially scout for extra things if needed okay so this guy's rallied down here to build that we're gonna stop at 19 scvs because what do we do guys oh he's walled off <laughs> reaper and orbital so the reason I know he's walled off is because my SCV was pathing into a corner. So I've shift clicked him with an A move to harass the wall off there. Just to see, hey, what, what sort of wall off is this? And we can see a factory behind it. So we know my opponent's doing a pretty standard two gas opening. Gas, gas, quick barracks, uh, quick factory there. Which is very standard for TVT at higher levels. And right, SCV mule, we then build a marine after that. Random soundtrack change over to the Morrowind soundtrack. I like it. We then build a factory. See, 150 minerals, 100 gas. I'm actually cutting an SCV to get that down slightly faster. Oops, we did just take some damage there, which was a bit peasant of me. Um, yes, guys, I'm a classist. What can I say? <laughs> now, I can scout with the Reaper, but... Because it's TBT, you do have to be really careful. So I'm going to stay at home um, with these units for now. And they're going to even stay on the high ground. So I'm not actually going to bother scouting uh, with the Reaper. Though I would normally go harass with it first. Protoss or Zerg. Just going to make adjustments per the matchups. As is logical. If you want, you can still send that Reaper across. It's just if you lose it and then you've got nothing but a Marine and you're waiting for these buildings to finish, you are going to feel a little bit silly, aren't you? Now, in TVT, also, especially with this build, right now I'm very low on units. He could come in with two Reapers and Alien. So keep dropping your mules on the high ground for now. Because he could run in, and it's going to be a, a little bit until we get these Marines in this cycle now. Remember, once again, we are kind of starved for gas right now. It is what it is. Just holding down that Cyclone key, so the moment we get 100 gas, bam. I actually had one guy not mining on the gas geyser. Should have noticed that earlier. Now, I'm going to send the uh, the Reaper in to scout the production and then hopefully damage the mineral line. And the reason I'm doing that now is because, hey, I've got a good pack of Marines out. I've got a Cyclone about to pop. I don't feel very stressed about my situation in this game. Now, notice I'm using my Rally Point to send this guy up here. We're just building depots on the edges so I see any incoming harassment nice and early. And, okay, looks like he's just got Marines and tanks. Pretty standard stuff. My Liberator will rally across the map. Now, because he's got tanks and marines, I'm actually going to send my cyclone across the map just to try and kind of see what's going on. And we're once again, remember the Liberator used up all of our gas. We're waiting for 125 gas for a tank. Da, 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 da. These little gaps in production. It feels awkward. I know some people aren't going to like that part of this build order. Like I said, you can always do the third gas if you really want to, but I think this is not bad. I think it's okay to have little gaps in production. Now, he's on one base. Okay, so that's... Definitely an issue. I'm going to send a few Marines out here as well. Okay. So we're going to get those two extra barracks. And we're going to keep building these. So guys, um, 
Because he's on one base, we're going to swap over and start building Vikings right now. And we're just going to keep building Marines, Tanks, Vikings as quickly as possible. And this is going to wait up here. So I think he might be doing a one base drop. Ah, okay. That's interesting. Tank and Banshees this early. Wow, this I was not expecting. Very cute play here by my opponent. Just gonna run these SCVs away. Cyclone being on the wrong side of the map definitely hurts. I don't know why I scanned there. It's really not necessary. Okay. So he's on one base. So he's gonna be doing a ground based all in to follow that up, guys. And that's going to be very, very dangerous for me. So we're going to once again send some Marines out just to get a bit of vision. The Liberator's going to come in. We did build a Cyclone there and uh, more Vikings in response. Now he could come in with another um, Banshee, but I'm just assuming he's not because I'm in such a desperate position that I really <laughs> have to be very careful right now. Notice he doesn't have anything to deal with the Liberator, guys. Okay. And we're just scouting. Hey, what's up here? Oh, shit. Alright, we're going to use the lib to harass. Okay. Yeah. Alright, the Liberator does go down. Gonna try and build some more barracks here just to get some more production up any which way. Uh, desperately do need more gas as well, by the way. Don't know where his army's going to, man. Oh, did he just break these rocks? <laughs> oh my god, okay. cool little play by him so he's really obviously um getting me with the banshees it was really good because it was a one base banshee build so like super committed so notice we're basically sieged at the front and using these guys to defend the other side okay so what we're going to do now is try and get some reactors as well as stim we're also going to try and um, rally out to the third. And we're just keeping my ground army in a very central location while splitting the Vikings on both sides. Now, <clears throat> obviously this can go bad pretty quickly. We're trying to go double engineering bay. We've got the extra thingamajigs, more depots. So what's the idea here? Well, double E bay is upgrades. And then we're going to get three more barracks. Notice a pattern. This is exactly what I normally do. That's what you do. No matter how messy the game gets, just go back to your normal plan. So we're trying to saturate those bases. We're getting up the four reactors, the one tech lab, which will eventually get us stim and combat shields. Um, I'm going to build medevacs now because I've obviously already got so many Vikings. And uh, I guess these guys are... Oh, hello. It was a proxy. That I did not know. It was one base proxied as well. Holy shit. Okay. It'd be funny if he actually had more banshees waiting out there somewhere. I'm gonna build a turret in each base just in case. Add-ons ready. Okay. 
So how long till sh combat shields? All right, so we've got about a minute and 20 seconds until we want to fight. Uh, I'm not going to have 2-2 two, two for this push, but we also probably have pretty decent army anyway. We got a third up? Nope. Just trying to see what his army looks like, guys. And because my base is uh, saturating out a bit earlier than normal, I'll take a fourth on location. But it's just so I can transfer work, because it's still basically the same sort of like just mass marine tank all in. We're just adding that to keep up the uh, income, so I can just keep making marine tank armies over and over again. That's the whole reason right now. So we're pushing forwards. We can also transfer these guys ahead of time, so you can see the way that's all saturated quite nicely. And we can also do maybe a supply drop here, plus two depots, and everything else is for checking that slot. Okay. So we can just see he gets out of position. And yeah. And now he has to come fight into me, which is obviously really bad for him. So he's going to go across the map. So this is a lack of map control for him was his big problem. GG. Really good play by him, right? He hard countered my strategy. He did a one base Banshee drop, right? Cool. This really exposed a weak point in my build. And people are always pointing out weak points in any build guide I do, right? And they're like, well, this doesn't stop this. This doesn't stop that. And that's StarCraft in general. You can't naturally be safe all the time against that one situation. Now, in hindsight, we could make an adjustment to our build, right? <clears throat> so, if I were, say, to scout with the Reaper or something, and I were to see, hey, there's still no expansion, that is kind of a bit of a tell. So I could make a special rule here for TVT. Now, using high-level TVT knowledge, this is a Diamond opponent, I think Diamond above, you could probably use this. You could do something like, hey, I do hide the SCV behind there. And I actually do this, and you'll see pros do this sometimes. And then I come in, and if at two minutes 30, they don't have an expansion, then you know your opponent's being more aggressive than normal. Now, the, the problem there is this has got to be something that's really advanced, right? I don't know it's a proxy starport. It could just be mass Reaper Hellion on one base. He could have gone Reactor, and he's just going Reapers, Hellions, Reapers, Hellions. He's just going to dive in with like three Hellions and six or eight Reapers, and just, you know, it's a pretty scary attack, but it doesn't require missile turrets. They're not going to help against that. Hell, missile torrents wouldn't help against that. Um... So the question is, how do you stop this? And this is something where this is a lesson, not about how do I make this build 100% sold. That's not the concern. The concern is, oh, I played against this on ladder. You could very easily just say, oh man, did too much damage to me. I lost this game. I'm behind, you know. It, it is what it is. Shrug shoulders. That's it. But I actually wanted to talk to you guys today. I'm going to be giving a separate video about this anyway. So I might as well introduce the concept now. The idea is actually to continually be improving look at a problem and reverse engineer it there is a system for figuring out how to get better at starcraft and that system in this case is you find the point when the problem hits you okay so what am i looking for i'm waiting for when these cloaked banshees come in he could have hit a little bit faster if i want i can shave 10 15 seconds off this let's say four minutes 40 cloaked banshee all right so this is a problem oh oof, oof, oof. all right this is going to give us Give us some uh, some nightmares. All right, all right, okay. So let's let's put this down at the very bottom. Problem: one base cloaked banshee hitting at four minutes. 40. Now, could it technically hit a bit faster? Maybe. I don't care. Where I always go off the timings that my opponents hit me at, rather than what technically could happen, because there is unlimited builds in StarCraft. There's always a way it can hit a little faster or a little later, but you don't want to be playing paranoid against against things that aren't even happening yet, right? So. Okay, so what do we need to defend that? Well, if you think about it, guys, how long does an engineering bay take to make? An engineering bay, I think it's 25 seconds. Let's take a look. We can click on it. 25 seconds. And a missile turret is like, I don't know, 18 seconds? Let's take a look. Missile, turret, Wikipedia. <clears throat> 18 seconds. Okay, guys, so 18 plus 25. I'm no good with numbers. 43 seconds. Okay, cool. All right. eBay, 25 seconds plus turret, 18 seconds equals 43 seconds. Okay, so it takes me 43 seconds 
So if I start an engineering, so something we could be like, all right, so eBay at four minutes, straight into turrets versus one base opponent, you know, equals they finish right on time. Okay, so that's something you could choose to do. That's an option. I don't like this option because unless you have an idea that it's actually, there's a proxy starport or something, you don't know that it's that. And hell, it could be a battle cruiser. Missile turret doesn't do much against a battle cruiser. <laughs> it helps defend the mineral line a little bit, but you know, there's better things to do. What's even better than that, guys? Like what's even better is like just having your cyclone at home and a scan available is, is enough. But like, but wait, right? So why was this so bad for me? Well, it was so bad because these, these little shits came in and I just sent my cyclone across the map. And the reason I did that, and I was telling you guys as I did it, I was like, oh, he's got Marines and tanks on one base. I think he's doing some sort of Marine tank medevac all. And that was the read that I'd made on the situation. Little did I realize that it was a proxy banshee. So I thought, let's, let's move the cyclone out so I can pick off a few units as he's moving across the map. We can spot the attack coming. That'll be cool. Problem, this cyclone is an integral piece of anti-air. It's the only anti-air. So it being on the very far wrong side of the map was an absolute disaster in this scenario. An absolute disaster. Um, now, obviously, something else you can make, and this is where gambling comes in, and, and being a gambler makes you much a much better StarCraft player. Knowing kind of when to gamble and when to take a good gamble, a lot of people be like, but what if I don't have a scan available? Ah! And I'd be like, okay, think about it this way. Even if you're dropping scans non-stop, you have two different orbitals. Notice they're both on different energy timers. So even at this point, it's only about 10 seconds till I have a scan available. These come in, I could just run my SCVs away, run my Marines and tanks away, bring and, and then, you know, bring say, say my Cyclones up here. I can bring those forces together, the Banshees fly into the main, and then I drop a scan and chase them off. And then by the time that scan wears off, I should have another scan almost available. Even if this had spent its energy, it was only on 18 energy right now, that means what, like 40 seconds from now, I'll have another scan. So I gotta wait 10 seconds to get scan energy. I'll drop a scan, which will last nine seconds. And then I've gotta wait maybe another 15, 20 seconds until I have the other scan available. This is definitely, you're gonna take damage. My point being though, there's a decent chance, as long as your cyclone's not randomly on the other side of the map and is at home, you're gonna have a scan available in the vicinity of when those Banshees fly in. And this is where, there's two different responses, right? There's, oh, versus one base players, I always save scans, or I always build turrets, or I get a safety raven just to be safe, and then I go into, you know, the other thing. Like, you know, there, there's options you guys have, for sure. There, there are options, and there's different paths based on how you want to play the game. But those are all strategic things. Now, let's look at the physical response, which there's always room to improve at. And there's two different ways you can improve. The physical, the micro reaction, and then there's the macro reaction, which is the like, strategically, how could I have spotted this coming? How could I adjust my build and have better tools available? In terms of the micro reaction though, we're talking about number one, the cyclone as a general rule should always be at home. Now I do still send the cyclone across, but I understand every time I do it, I know it's a big risk and I'm consciously taking that risk, okay? So I, I'm okay with getting punished for it. A lot of people aren't okay with getting punished when they take the risk. You take a gamble, you, you roll the dice, that's what happens. And there's a lot of that in StarCraft, where there's a, a very low percentage move you're going out. So what did I do, guys? I F2'd immediately, because I needed to grab my Cyclone and my Marines together. But because he had two Banshees together and focused the Marines and stutter stepped really well, I couldn't, there was no point scanning here. Because by the time I got under the Banshees, I had like three or four Marines left. I wouldn't have even killed a single Banshee. I would have barely got it into the orange. So I just said, screw it, don't waste the scans. And then once the Marines were gone, I, uh, I, I, I did the scan with the Cyclone and took these out. What else? In the midst of that, I started building more Vikings and Cyclones to make sure I could shut those units down. Other than that, as soon as it's held, we're just going back to macro. We're holding down the SCV key, getting our workers back on mining, which they're just jerking it right now, which is not great. Re-establishing map control so that we don't get hit by a push and just trying to fix up my macro. Did I take massive damage there? Oh, hell yeah. I took a huge amount of damage. Let's look at the units lost tab. I lost 22 units, 1,400 units, 550. Like I'm, I'm obviously in a really rough spot, but I'm still up eight workers. And that is because remember, this comes at a cost. Whenever your opponent does big damage, my opponent's only starport is on my side of the map. He can only build medevacs one at a time. If he wants to float this home or build an add-on, it's like gonna take forever before this starport's of any no, like normal use. He's also only on one base. I'm on three command centers. 
So I can actually bounce back from this damage, even taking a massive amount of damage and not defending it that cleanly quite well. So the thing is, there is an element sometimes of just saying, you know what? Hey, if, if I get proxy banshee, shrug shoulders, and I happen to have just dropped two mules and have literally 10 energy on one command center, 20 on the other, and I've got to wait for the engineering bay to build and then missile turrets to build, I'm probably going to lose that game. But the number of times that someone proxy banshees is maybe one in 15 games. The number of times, and then if half of those games, I have enough orbital energy around to defend it completely fine and still be even or ahead, who gives a shit, right? Because it means half of those one in 15 games, one in 30 games, you will lose to this strategy straight up. And that is what I call an acceptable risk. That's something I just shrug my shoulders and I go, eh, I'm not changing my build for that. Now, if, if a bunch of people proxy Vanshee me on one base and it's a really popular build in the meta, I'll make that adjustment. I'll be like, okay, I'm going to I'm gonna double check that. Maybe I just send Marines around. Maybe I just send two Marines, one around each corner of the map, and I spot it. Maybe I do that at like 3 minutes 30 each game. I like send out, you know, a, a Marine or two, and I find it at a time. Maybe I, I build those that earlier engineering bay, right? Maybe I go for a safety raven each game. There's options there, but the point is, I hope you guys are getting an eye into my decision making here. And it's explaining a little bit more kind of how we don't want to stress out too much. And that process of, ooh, here's a problem. This thing screwed me up in the game. Let's check when it hits. Let's think about some reactions we can do on the macro strategic level. But then let's also just look at pull SCVs away, move your units underneath, drop a scan, A move, send your workers back to mine. That micro reaction, getting more comfortable with that, that's something you also want to memorize, write down the exact notes of what you should focus on. You've got to quickly F2 everything home, get under there, drop the scan when you're right underneath the banshees. Who knows, maybe your opponent focuses your cyclone down. That's a scenario you can run into as well, where you have to then micro your cyclone back to make sure the banshees can't kill it. There's, there's a lot of things that can happen in a StarCraft game. So focus on both the micro and the macro. You're going to get way better. All right, guys, we're going into a TVP against Bullia, a diamond player. And we're going to be showing you guys a very easy push here. A delicious push, a three base push. Now, the problem with a three base push is this one's a little bit more complicated. Um, we're also showing you guys how to do a one, one, one opening, which means one barracks, one factory, one starport. Going to three bases means there's more chances in the game for our opponent to pull off some sneaky bs so in short this is a more complicated game plan than the easier two base pushes but as far as three base builds go i've done everything i can to make this the most babies friendly version of a three base build we've got very light harassment in terms of all we're doing is using a liberator and uh and we are going to use a reaper but i've already written in the notes and explained to you guys a bit that like you don't need to go for the reaper if, you, if you're really like i hate reapers it's too complicated you can just go marine first but the idea is we're not having to focus on like you know oh i'm dropping marines and microing them while macroing and bouncing back and forth between hellions and banshees and all these super micro intensive units none of that this is meant to be a bit simpler a bet meant to be a bit more of an in-between step from you you know just doing the beginner bronze to GM build or that lovely, you know, seven and a half, eight minute tank push that I uh, did a video on recently. You know, one of those builds and going, I'm going to copy Maru's quick 3cc Hellion Banshee into bloody 5rex. <laughs> and we still have our push uh, and we're aiming for a 2-2 Marine tank push. So that's going to be awesome. All right, Reaper's going to come in. I, I don't want to focus on this too much because we want to focus more on the build. When you're first learning, guys, you really want to focus on the build. So we're going to kill a probe and then run away. Oh, good probe micro by him. All right, we're just going to run away now because we don't want to spend too much APM on it. Um, as you get better at the build and you know everything else like clockwork, like you know exactly when everything's coming down, you can spend more APM on something like that, right? Where you micro it. But remember, whenever you're learning a build, focus on learning the macro of the build first and foremost. And then learn the other bits later. All right, guys. So he's got a guy coming to harass. That's fine. Keep dropping mules in the main if there's any fear of them coming in and kicking your butt. But a Reaper plus some Marines will be able to defend that. So let's not get too distracted by it, eh? That's saturated. You want to go Cyclone first? You can skip that. There we go. Now if he comes in with another Stalker, that could be a problem. So we don't want to chase him down the ramp. We'll use the Cyclone to defend. Uh, Verse Zerg, it's not as important that Cyclone, but Verse is Protoss and Terran, blocks Oracle. 
blocks drops, liberated. blocks liberators, all of that stuff. And our liberator is going to rally down this right side to a nice little staging point, okay? All right. Now you are always hitting these little gas blocks in this scenario, but notice it's just been really straightforward, right? Marines, Reapers, and as soon as we get enough gas, we'll build a tank here as well. And remember, it's a 3cc build. So this is all we want to do for now. And before building extra barracks, we want to go for an extra command center, okay? Now, if you want, you can send the Reaper through for a full scout, you know, try and get more vision, all sorts of stuff. Um, the Liberator is also going to scout as well. So this is all going to give us information about what's going on in the game. But we don't want to stress about that, as I said, until we've uh, gotten a little bit more uh, down on the macro front. Oh, hello. All right. So we're just happened to be looking at that, which is always nice. <laughs> My Liberator is going to chase after that. Cyclone will stay in the main for now. Uh, okay, so you always want to build two barracks next to these two buildings, guys. Oh, hello. Okay, pull the Liberator back. Um, and the idea is they'll swap onto these two add-ons, okay? So we go third CC, then second and third barracks. Then we go two gases. Then we go... Double engineering bay. Make sure you don't build them to create a little corner where the SCVs can get stuck behind them. As that does suck. Um, we're going to queue this Liberator in. Because he saw it coming, we, we're not trying to force the issue with it. Normally we would have tried to do something with it. But as it is, just being nice and chill. Now we're going to lift these off. They're going to build a new tech lab and reactor for themselves. And the barracks are going to take those ones. So this is pretty standard stuff. Nothing too crazy. But getting used to these add-on swaps, something which I really steered you guys away from in a lot of my uh, earlier builds. And now we're kind of going, no, nah, all right, let's get used to those add-on swaps. Let's do that a little bit more. And that's the complexity that we're starting to add in with this. But we're very low on the interaction with the opponent. So that's all right. So we've got five barracks, building lots of SCVs. This guy's queued up. We're not going to micro it, guys. We see no gases there, though. Oh, hello. Oh, you being a dickhead. He got a third? He does. Lots of gateways, but not many gases. So the opponent could be doing a big zealot push or something, which is why I'm building bunkers. But because I see the third, we don't really need to worry about it. Let's let's stop reacting to things. That's unnecessary. <laughs> reacting to things is for those that we would call uh, tryhards and cucks, guys. And I am neither of those, and as such, I will not be reacting to things. I will be playing absolutely unafraid. Um, we do have to be careful, so because I don't have stim or shields, right? So we can move some marines out to the third, but we don't want to move the tanks out, okay? Um, so we'll, we'll keep the tanks here. Uh, we also probably should be wary of the fact that you should have been building a wall off, because this is a Protoss player, and they can hit you with my it. And, uh, okay, here we go. More tanks, more medevacs, all this good stuff coming in. And uh, you're at five barracks at this point. Four reactors after those barracks, the fourth and fifth, you drop the armory. That's what I did there. What do we do next? Well, there is an option to take an extra gas and get a second factory, but we're gonna do the more standard one, which is building three more barracks. Now, <clears throat> you can sometimes just build no add-ons on those. In this game, we're gonna build tech labs on those and we're gonna get marauders just to add a bit of tankiness to our army. But with this, we shouldn't need any extra gases. Now go make it worthwhile. Just four gas should get the job done. And we're going to try and build another wall off up there as well. Okay, let's just send a Reaper out. Put a few Marines around the map as well, guys. Uh, I guess push back those Cyclones. We don't need any more workers because that's basically full, guys. We're just going to put these guys up here. So I don't know what that was over there. Combat shields is on the way. Three tech labs. Ooh, we didn't start 2-2 yet, so that's pretty late. 8 minutes 20, because these take longer than 2 minutes to hit. So we're going to be hitting a little bit after 10 minutes. Bit late there. We definitely could be hitting that earlier if we're a little bit better with our build. So that's a lot of zealots. So if your opponent's trying to counterattack you with zealots, guys, what you want to do is you want to send a clearance squad. So three medevacs plus 24 marines, perfect number. Go ahead, need These guys, up. by the way, we're going to siege all these tanks at the front. 
Oh! We can now build marauders, so we're gonna get marauders building four at a time as well as our marines. Our clearance squad is gonna go around. We're gonna split one marine off from them, and the other guys are just gonna go make sure he can't be backstabbing us. 2-2 Two is well on the way. We can get vehicle weapons as well to line up with that. And notice this is the whole idea of the clearance squad, is you want to try and clear up any pylons, warp in points, anything like that. And just make sure that when you move out, you're not getting backstabbed, okay? So what we're going to do now is we're going to send just a few of those marines to the left. And we're going to send... Mm, let's just send a double drop, okay? So about 16 marines and two medevacs down the left. And the whole idea here is going to be that this is going to be a distraction squad. So the scariest thing with tanks is getting across the map, right? I want to push forward and siege up. So notice the idea, that's going to distract, and now we can push this right side of the map with the rest of my army, okay? So we're going to do some starter step there. And you notice he's still coming around. Okay, so he didn't see us though. So we're going to have, my rally should be enough to defend that. And then these guys are going to move forward. And you see, look look at this. So he's he's here with his army. That All that needs to do is run home. And then these guys can run in. But he's running away. So we'll run those guys back in, A move. And then these guys can just stim in. Get a nice forward siege up. Now, if he comes in, we've got to be real careful. We don't want to be too far forward. And we want the tanks to shoot the Colossus if possible. So notice we're trying to shift click those on the Colossus. And that's how it goes. Okay. And notice we had plenty of units at home. So his run by down here of Zealots. If he did send that in, he was running into all of these. So what we had there is some really important things with just clearing the map up before our push. Because if we grab our whole maxed army, move out, and the Zealots run in, you're like, ah! Oh! And then maybe you still try to force the push, but you stumble into like Psy Storm or Disruptors and you lose your whole army. So this is a really, like a lot of people when they're doing these three base pushes, they sit in their corner, they get no vision. Notice how, as I'm kind of, I should have started 2-2 quite a bit earlier, but as I'm at this point, I started, you know, oh, there's some Phoenix outside my base. I try to push him back. And then I sent some Marine spotters out, right? And this Marine spotter gets killed by his Zealots. So I go, oh, okay, I saw a bunch of zealots down there. All right, split off enough marines and medevacs to go push them back. And the idea isn't, I go there, he runs away, we chase him into his army and lose the three medevacs. We just clear it up, make sure there's no pylons here, push the zealots back, and we can always rejoin that with our army, right? So you notice the pattern? As long as we're starter stepping a big ball of marines, they'll do pretty good versus zealots. We got a ton of zealots for free because he's not watching. And what could have been an incredible game-winning backstab is not that good. And then because I've got a marine spotter down here already, I'm like, cool, we can see if he... He's probably preparing for me to go to the right side. These marines can now go clear up the left side. And because I want to push this right, where I know there's infrastructure in his base, I can pull his army to the left. And if I can get my army sieged up without him intercepting me, forcing me to siege, siege up, unsiege, move a little bit, siege, unsiege, I can get across the map much quicker. So this idea, I call this the distraction squad. And I use this when I'm doing like a lurker push against Protoss as well. I'll split off like 20 roaches and I force like them to recall part of their army and split their attention. And while they're dealing with that, my lurker army runs forward and sieges on their base. This is a, it's a common concept. Anytime you guys are using a sort of siege army, you can do this with a big pack of zealots to distract your opponent while your disruptors move forward and get a good position on them. Very common tactic, but something that's really nice. Either way, well played by Bully here. Let's go in and play a Zerg and see how that goes. All right, guys, we're now going in up against a Diamond Zerg player, Cabbage, to see how does the build play out against a Zerg. Now, in this matchup, we're going to be skipping the Cyclone because the Cyclone... I mean, if there's Overlord sitting around, we could maybe pick a few of them off. The problem is Zerglings do not give a shit about Cyclones. Uh, with speed, they can just surround it. It doesn't really help defend those all-ins, even though a Cyclone is very useful versus, say, a very quick Roach Rush, like five, six Roaches or Ravages. The moment there's speedlings in front of it, your cyclone becomes nearly useless. Because it's like, hey, I killed a zergling with my lock-on. Now, just give me 10 seconds to cool off my little lock-on missile launcher, and we'll be good. Now, we can make another adjustment versus Zerg, guys. And that is, hey, why would we scout so early versus Zerg? Zerg doesn't have any crazy fast rushes. So, 
we can actually just scout with the barracks SCV to see if they've expanded or not. And that's all we need to do. That'll give us plenty of time to respond. Um, so a little bit of an adjustment here for versing Zerg as well. If you want to just scout at 16, it's not that big a deal. Just go for it. It's not going to massively change the build. But uh, for now, we are rallying our 19th SCV down because the barracks guy is going to scout. So barracks guy is going to scout and then come back and mine. <clears throat> we'll get this going as well. What's the best response to Thor's as a Zerg? Uh, I mean, Thor's just died at anything. Neural Parasite is technically the, the counter to them, but the thing is that Thor's are a very expensive unit that come out one at a time and they, they lose to just about anything because you can just have way more than them. So, so that's one of those things where people are like, man, how do I beat Thor's? And like, the real thing is like, you know, they're fighting a guy who's massed fucking 30 Thors with 3-3 three, 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 and they're like man this unit's really good I'm like wait why does he have 30 Thors and you haven't killed him yet um, at that point you probably want I don't know I think mass ultra infest is a pretty good army for dealing with that anyways factory goes down second gas right after the factory guys remember we go marine so it's reaper marine and then reactor we're gonna move down there and see if we can kill the overlord now I'm, I don't want to harass too hard guys remember we want to focus on the build when we're learning this um, the whole point of this is we don't need to get too fancy. Let's just get out of there. Let's just get out of this. <laughs> we don't need to get too fancy, he says, as he circles the fucking mineral line. <laughs> just gonna check if the third's there and then pull back with it. Um, because there's no Hellions with this build, it means we don't have to be, you know, as on point with the micro. We're gonna hunt that over there a little bit more, by the way. Did I just see a drone coming in? No, it was a doggo. I'm like, did I see a drone? Just a little, a little Rufus there, a little doggo, just being like, nah, don't mind me, bro. Hello? Alright, we got the orbital on the way now. There we go. Uh, Marines building. We're gonna get a tank. That tank will go on the high ground, I believe, to start, guys. Will be a nice way of doing it. Um, yeah, I think we'll just put it up here so that it can't really get caught. On this map, the ramp's pretty far away, which is a bit of a problem, but it should be fine. Alright, so now we're just gonna sacrifice this Reaper. And this is something I could have been doing in the other games as well. I just didn't really think to. Um, the whole idea here being that, hey, let's uh, just get some vision, make sure I'm not being all in. Like, is there mass zerglings, roaches popping out? What do we see? We see gases, a couple lings, lots of drones on the expansion. Looks totally normal, nothing to get worried about. Right. Let's actually put the tank on the low ground, since we're going to be walling off in a moment anyway. Get that third command center up. And then we can finish the wall off with another depot in the near future. Build another tank. So it's still pretty much the same build, guys. We've just got that Liberator rallying up. Um, actually, I'm going to rally the Liberator down here so it can come behind the third and then threaten the natural in the third. Whereas if I hit the main, I think it's a bit harder to like, rotate down to that next spot, if that makes sense. Okay. All right. So, remember, what's up next after the third command center? Oh, Overlord's coming in. We want to go for these two barracks, and we want to be ready to swap over onto these two add-ons. So, there we go. We've got, got that third tank. And that will siege up there. Okay, so we got the two barracks. Then we go two gases. Then we go two engineering bears. Remember, I'm queuing all of these back to mine after what they do. And then we're going to go to the 4th and 5th barracks, which we don't have the money for just yet. Now, the reason I'm not lifting that off, guys, is we want to lift both of these off at the same time. Batch your actions together so you're not constantly having to look back at things. Try to do multiple things at a time. It's always a really nice way of doing it. So we can go reactor, tech lab, and we can move those barracks over in a moment. We're going to ignore the liberator now, guys. Let's not look at it, okay? It's, it's done some stuff, it's being annoying. Fourth and fifth barracks goes down. These two barracks land. Notice, same action. Box both of them, do it the same. The Liberator's still doing a lot of stuff, so it's doing probably a lot more than it should. I'm just gonna friggin' fly it through the base to see what we're up against. Obviously, it would be better to just leave it there. I just don't want to get too far ahead against my opponent to the point where I just win the game with a single Liberator, so... Purposefully clicking that through. And I guess I'd like to just see what that tech structure is. Bailing Nest. Okay, so it looks like a pretty standard style. Okay, 
Okay, so we can put tanks out here. Put a tank on the low ground. Notice we go 4th and 5th barracks. Then we go armory. And then we're going to go for the 8 barracks afterwards, okay? So we're rallied over to that 3rd. We're still dropping mules for another few minutes in this game. And there we go. We can also start building a few depots down here. So next up, remember, is three more barracks. I've already queued up plenty of SCVs. We probably don't need any more than that. And we need 450 minerals. So remember, do it all in one go. Three barracks. Queue them back. Now we need combat shields and 2-2 two -two to start up right on time so that we can get our push going as hard and fast as possible. Now this is where the kind of beautiful part of the build is in that this is a point where a lot of people would be doing all sorts of fancy stuff. And for us, we're just kind of sitting here. But guess what? We do have 16 marines. We should probably have two medevacs out by now. These medevac productions a little bit slow. Apologies for that. So what we would normally do at this point is... Uh, oh, let's run those SCVs away. Hello. Very cute. Um, we would use this to, to start clearing the creep, right? Two two starts, plus one vehicle weapons. And guys, do we want Marauders? I think Marauders is the more standard one. Adds a bit more longevity to the push than just getting a handful more Marines. And it's still pretty damn effective. Now, against um, Terran and Protoss, often you're trying to distract your opponent. But against the Zerg, let's think about where do we want to push? Probably this base, right? Because that's the fourth. So let's try and clear creep on that push path, right? So let's try and actually clear creep as much as we can to set up for where our push is going to come from. Let's just build a few more of these, by the way. All right, we're building Marauders now. More tanks, more medevacs. And luckily, there's not much creep spread, but the whole goal here is just to try and clear some creep if possible. And then just pick up, get out of there. No worries, we could just drop further back. And look at that, that's that's setting up for our push path, which is awesome. So, how's our 2-2? When your 2-2 is about two-thirds complete is usually when you want to move out. We've got seven tanks, so it's fantastic. We can kind of F2 even. We're going to start pushing up there. Because with Zerg, you want to do a slow push. You want to kind of bait them into fighting you. You kind of want to do this in every matchup. Now, obviously, we don't want to step deep on creep before 2 2 is done, and then bam, our opponent just like kicks our ass. But <laughs> you do want to maybe. Um, you do want to maybe. Oh, that's a changeling that was in there, right? Alright, let's send some Marines ahead. Try and get an idea of what his army's looking like. Alright, so we can be real cautious, right? Just make sure there's no way that he can get in here. And then we can kind of start leapfrogging these tanks just a little bit at a time. Have the Marines pre-spread. And you can see 2-2 two is almost done. So we, we kind of want to start that push real soon. And we're going to start moving these tanks forward. Now he's got uh, Ravagers, so we do have to be a little cautious. Put that over here. And what you can do here is you can kind of like move forward bio and just try to like bait him into fighting you. See, so if the fight happens, we're going to F2 stim. But we're not actually going to A move. We're just going to kind of pull back units. Only F2 A move if you really are okay with all your units coming forward and clumping up. And I was only okay with that because there was not many Bayman's left. And this also brings our reinforcement across the map. So now we can shove in. We can move these tanks forward. Move those tanks. Move that tank. And let's try and pre-spread here. And because there's no Banelings, we can kind of go, oh, there's no Banelings. F2 A move. We can just go for a big old stim for the win. Gonna grab all of my tanks, move them up in between the rally point to there. Maybe even move those ones there. We can put a medevac on the high ground to see what's going on. Move some of the Marine Marauder back here. Don't want to give away too many of these kills. That was a bit sloppy. Do we have a fifth base down there? We'll check for that. And remember, got to be careful. So most of the guys just spread back here. And the medevac's trying to stay away from those corruptors. We're just trying to bait him into a bad fight here. 
Now you might be like, hey, why aren't you macroing? Why aren't you looking at home? Guys, my macro is this. I'll select my barracks, I'll hold down the Marauder key, the Marine key, the Tank key, the Medevac key. That's it. Why not anything else? Technically, if your push stalls out, if you completely lose your army, or you've got to wait a long time for the creep to dissipate to get near anything, yeah, you could do this. Start 3-3, build three or four command centers. But generally speaking, other than, you know, maybe moving SCVs to like a new fourth base or something like that as you take it, which definitely does do a lot to preserve your income, it's more important for you to use this army you've spent all game building up correctly to move it forward methodically and to just try and make sure you don't throw the tanks away and you just kind of move forward. Now, something we didn't do at all is drop the back. We absolutely could have either queued liberators in the back or a drop to make it even easier for me to move forward and siege up my opponent's base with very low risk of ambush. I didn't do that because I was like, hey, there's not that much creep spread. I'm just gonna clear creep for the push with the one drop, right? These guys are gonna move forward. I don't even drop them. I actually just move them across the map to make sure they clear up any Marines. We're just gonna try and make sure there's an avenue of creep clear so we can get in range of the fourth base. The newest base is usually the easiest one to push. And we're not gonna overload our multitasking. Now, what's something else that I could have done in this game? I could have grabbed a Marine and put it up here. Because I've got a wall off there, so I'm not too worried about runbys on the south side because of that. I guess they could come here. I didn't have a depot wall there. But, you know, if a shit ton of lings ran in from that side right after I moved out, that would have been a bit of a bummer. I've already put some pressure on with the drop and pulled them home, so it's a lower percentage chance that'll happen. But hey, he had a changeling. 50 lings ran in there. Definitely could have really bought a lot of time, messed up my build order, made things very, very difficult for myself. But notice... As always, scanning ahead of the push, seeing where the army is. I sieged up really conservatively here because my upgrades weren't done yet. <laughs> um, and we did just have a massive supply advantage. But remember to benchmark your pushes as well. So in this case, it's about 10 minutes usually when we're hitting in, this, in, in these games. It's going to be about, what, 9 minutes 50. And we are maxed out, right? Ten, let's say 10 minutes is when 2-2 two -two actually kicks in. So 10 minutes, we're maxed out. I have 8 barracks. I've got the factory, the starport, the three command centers. 2-2 two -two is finished. I've got plus one vehicle weapons, stim shields, concussive. I've got 11 marauders, nine tanks, 74 marines. I've only got four medevacs, so I definitely could have had a few more medevacs. I've been a bit sloppy on my production of that. But you can just see that this is a gigantic army. And because I don't clump the whole thing up, it's hard. Even with my opponent setting up a pretty sexy flank, trying to come in from multiple sides, uh, he's just too outnumbered, right? The, the army value. I mean, we can look at the active forces tab. And you can see, look at the value of my army compared to my opponents, right? 2,200 more minerals, 500 more gas. I mean, there's no way he's going to win this fight. There's just no way. The opponent maybe could have backstabbed, counterattacked, tried to re-expand to the bottom and just bought time until he's also maxed out. But he also doesn't have any carapace upgrades, which is an absolute disaster. He'll have one plus one carapace by the time the fight starts. But carapace is so important or the bio just guns you down. So remember what I said, I don't... I don't move i don't a move the whole f2 even when i f2 stimmed there and i literally f2 stimmed you can see i stimmed the guys at home as well i only pulled back these guys on the front i let everything else take off because if you if you a move too early and you clump everything up and then units come in from here and here you can end up in a big ball with nowhere to go and it's just it's one of the biggest things is what if they start engaging and then they just pull back so many terrans clump their whole army and then they've got to manually spread all their units back out again. Whereas I was very patient here, only on the tail end when I wanted to save this tank if possible, did I stim forward to punish those units. And he came in with a very belated flank and obviously that didn't really do anything. Um, but yeah, it's really important to not just be like clumping your units. If you've made the effort to pre-spread, control them manually. And this is a little bit like, how do I get better at micro? Should I have seven different control groups for my buyer? Manually control your shit wherever possible. Always scan ahead so you know what you're stepping into. Even here, I was just setting up to move forward a bit deeper and do another pre-spread. I then scanned and saw my opponent just had nothing. And I was like, oh, okay, we can kind of shove in. Let's just, okay. There's no reason to be so cautious. Let's just keep going. But uh, in the end, that worked out. So I hope you guys really enjoyed this build order. Um, this is a really nice three base push. Remember that there's a lot of things that can happen to you. There's a lot of situations you might need to react and adapt to and scout, but you've got the tools to react and scout. I haven't really talked about it yet, so let's talk about it here now that we've looked at these three games. Um, 
what can happen? Well, you could get rushed at the start. You don't have the three barracks production. Look, we've only got five Marines, but we've got a siege tank on the high ground. And this could even be put up here for extra safety as well. And we're building a second tank, right? We've got the Liberator, which is a really nice flexible piece of harassment, but it's also very low micro. You don't need to do too much micro. You get rewarded a lot when you do a bit of extra micro with the Liberator, but it's just a fantastic harassment unit. And this is just us getting used to building a bigger economy and responding and defending with tech units in the correct placements. Tanks can defend such a superior number of units just by being positioned in the right areas. Obviously down here, very dangerous if there was a Ravager push coming. I'd want that tank to be further back, like here or something like that, right? So the Ravagers can't really get in range of filing it. Whereas if he, he has an Overlord here and just runs up, kills that with three Ravagers, takes one tank shot, that's terrible, right? But I saw a third hatchery. I scouted and saw a full mineral line with my Reaper. My Liberator comes in as well. It sees that he's droning the third base. Does a fair bit of damage as well. You can see there. And behind it, we're just adding the barracks. The gases, the eBays, the fourth and fifth barracks, and working our way forwards. So you guys are going to have, hey, what if they go for a battle cruiser? Well, you've got a starport on a reactor. Rather than swapping it off at this point, you could build Vikings to deal with two base muta you could even you could even deal with two base muta with getting a few vikings out to help initially if you wanted to but against bcs you've got you've got that you've got all the tech available you can build cyclones or tanks as needed there's a lot of fantastic tech available here so it gives you a lot of options on the other hand because you're not pushing as hard and fast you will have more situations you need to deal with there's going to be more of a skill set around there but i think this is a really good build which is kind of halfway between full-on just macro four base five base six base play and the two base all-ins that we've been teaching so i hope this one helps you guys out and gives you uh, a nice in-between step to this is this is a pretty big macro play but it's also a three base all-in and i know that's kind of a contradiction it seems like to most people but remember, no matter how much you macro, you always should have timing attacks in mind, times where you go and push your opponent and try to exert your pressure on them and kill them.